All right, so on slide one, we're, we're looking at the standing wave pattern. And the, how these are formed is when a certain frequency is reached for the strings, for, no, for the waves traveling along a string. So in other words, they discriminate. These frequencies, not all of them are allowed. They give you a standing wave pattern. So the string discriminates for specific frequencies. So those frequencies, we call them the first harmonic, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic, and so on. So strings are capable of discrimination as well. So they're discriminating based on frequencies. So only some frequencies will give you the standing wave pattern. And if you play another frequency, waves are still going to be generated, but you will no longer get a standing wave pattern. So you'll get something that looks a bit strange. So you don't get the perfect symmetrical type waves. So you get like some odd shape patterns going on in there. So not standing wave. Right, because so far for the standing wave patterns is we continuously have waves interacting. And uh, it just so happens that for specific frequencies, we get these patterns that look very almost symmetrical, you can argue. Whereas if you hit another frequency, because that's allowed, you could be oscillating the string at different frequencies. And if you don't get the right frequency, then you'll get some non-standing wave pattern. So it looks not so symmetrical. And the way we recognize these patterns is by the number of bumps. So remember the bump number. It determines the pattern. But now we're going to get a little bit more technical. And the bumps actually have a specific name. We call those regions the antinode. So another way to think about antinode is going to be where the node is not located. So this means we need to find yet another place on this standing wave pattern that is a node. So we need to find a node. Node is just the regions where there is no displacement. So from our first wave pattern, which region has no displacement? Okay, so at the end, the string is not being displaced, right? It just stays in place. So at both ends, we have regions of no displacement. In the second pattern, once again, at the ends, we have no displacement, but there's now another point that also has no displacement. So that one has three nodes. And then we can keep going, right? The next pattern has how many nodes? Four and then five. So if we know where a node is, a node is where it has no displacement, antinode will be the region that has the maximum displacement. So where are we going to identify the maximum displacement? Yeah, the maximum displacement, right? The amplitude. So you see, as we go from one pattern to the next, the number of antinodes increases by one. Where antinodes, I was just calling the bumps before. So in the first pattern, we see one, then two, three, four, whereas if we look, pardon me? No, because technically, technically, I should have counted the top one and the bottom one at one given moment in time, right? Because they keep on oscillating back and forth. Yeah, so technically, if I had the sine wave pattern, I would have two antinodes. But because these keep on oscillating back and forth, usually they're drawn right beside it. But you're right. Actually, you, you, you've, you detected something most students never pick up on. All right, and if we look at the number of antinodes, I mean, at the number of nodes, we go from two to three to four 
to 5. So in either case, the standing wave pattern, it always goes up for 1, whether you're looking at the antinodes or the nodes. Chance making? Okay, good. Oh, yeah, slide 2. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Yikwe. Uh, my mind is somewhere else. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Uh, yeah, he's going to get uh, elected soon, so it's all good. All right, so we said that after these waves interact and, and they more technically are called they superimpose, so standing waves, their technical word is called superimpose, which last time we said is just the result of adding multiple waves. So if we add up y1 plus y2 plus y3, we get the standing wave pattern, which could be a capital Y. In other words, we're adding sine plus sine plus sine, and then we get another sine graph. Right, so we got another sine graph. So this means that here we have another sine wave. But now, and if we look at the whole length of the string, in some cases, you fit one full wave cycle. In other cases, you meet half a wave cycle or other combinations as well. So a game that we played is, if we consider the length of the string L, and we look at each of the different wave patterns, how much of a wavelength is in each length L? Wait, wait, I'm writing it down. How much of wavelength in length L? So again, what's a full wave cycle? It needs to go through the crest and the trough. So in the when the antinode equals to 1, how much of a full wave cycle is there? So that's what we say. In this length L, we find that there's only half of a wave cycle. When the antinode number is 2, in the whole length L, how much of the full wave cycle do you see? 2? Set two. Oh, this is the Malaysian term for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see the four wave cycle. And when the antinode number is three and the length L of the string, how much of a wave can you see at a moment in time? One and a half. But Tian Jin, he loves fractions. He will have written this as three over two. Right? Because here you have a full wavelength and the remaining piece is just half a wavelength. So that's why you could say one and a half, or you could say three over two. And if you see for the next antidote number of four, in this length L, there's actually two full waves. So this is written as two lambda. Now, I know last time I introduced it, but then I think this topic is a bit confusing. That's why I'm doing it again. So you're like, sir, you did this already. How much uh, distracted are you today? No, I'm not. It's just, I think it's worth it to do it again. Oh, yeah, he chose a bad day to, to plan for his. No, yesterday would have been good, because yesterday we had uh, like study period. Okay, but now each of these wavelengths are not equal length. So that's why each of these wavelengths, they they're, have their own corresponding length. So we call them lambda 1, lambda 2 lambda 3 and lambda 4. So although there's a wave in there, those waves all have different wavelengths. In other words, the length of the wave is all different. So that's why each of these corresponding wave patterns has its own corresponding wavelength. Right? You can see it by the distance. Like the distance is totally different between each of the waves. This is where you nod your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now from this, what we did afterwards is for each of the wavelengths, we're going to just ex express it in terms of the length L. So in other words, we're going to solve for lambda 1, which is going to be twice the length of the string. Lambda 2, we don't have to do anything, it's equal to L. Lambda 3 is 3L three over 2. I think, no, 2L over 3. And the fourth wavelength is going to be L over 2. All right, and from this, 
what we did last time, we derived a general formula to give us the wavelength for any standing wave pattern. And what was that formula? I think uh, 2L over M, yeah. Okay, so this is a good place to take a small question period. Uh, any questions up to this point? <laughs> Which part? We did it again. But which part? You gotta be able to single it out. See, this part didn't make sense. Uh, did you understand the length equals half a wavelength? So, in this case, a full wave cycle will look like this, like the, what I did in gold. Right? Because that's what the sine wave looks like. But in the whole length of the string that we had, only half of the full wave cycle appear. And this thing? Yeah, yeah. So this is the f wavelength one. Oh, tripod thing. Okay, I get it. Yeah, tripod. Yeah, so all we did, we just isolated for wavelength one. So you multiply both sides by two. Yeah, that one you, you, you have. Max, you always ask like really good questions. Because because this formula, this is represented when M is the anti-node number. So other people or other formulas, they write the formula, but instead of the anti-node number, they write it for the node number. Yeah, so there is a different formula. Because in the first pattern, there was only M equals to 1. But in this first pattern, the nodes were equal to 2. In the second wave, in our case, m is the anti-node. So when m equals to 2, the number of nodes is actually 3. So usually nodes is given the letter n. Usually, but again, not always. And your textbook... They're not consistent. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't, depending on the lesson. So this part is annoying about waves. And it's the same thing for grade 12, it's annoying. Because the formulas are all different, and you have to be really careful what the M or the letter N represent. So if we want to put it in terms of... Uh, yeah, so I'll leave it at that for now. Okay, so we saw how... There's different wavelengths, but because we talked about the same medium and the medium is not changing, that no matter what you do to the frequency, you could change how fast you oscillate the string, but you cannot change how fast the wave will travel. In other words, since the medium is the same, what has to remain constant? the speed of the wave is constant. So when we're trying to create all of our different wave patterns, we kept on changing the wavelength. So let's say if we change the wavelength, then what has to happen to the frequency? Also changes. So if the wavelength goes down, the frequency has to go up. Or the other way. Or if the wavelength increases, then the frequency has to decrease. Just like you saw in the standing wave pattern, right? What was the first standing wave pattern? It had a very big wavelength, but the frequency was small frequency. And as we decrease the wavelength, the frequency goes up. And if you decrease the wavelength even more, then the frequency goes even higher. And again, all of this is true because what's the speed formula? Speed equals to frequency times the wavelength. So the medium stays the same, so we have to preserve the ratio for the speed of the wave. Raj, were you able to follow that? Okay, uh, let's go to slide four. Okay, so again, so in general, we have the speed of the wave is the frequency times the wavelength. So if we want to find a new expression for the frequencies that we are allowed to play, 
to make a standing wave pattern, it's going to be the speed divided by the wavelength. But now we have an equation for the wavelength, which we're going to substitute into this equation. So the frequency is going to be 2L over M. Now let's do division. When you're dividing, it's the same thing as multiplying by the, by the reciprocal. So that's why the formula is going to become MV over 2L. Again, this is me trying to be so kind to show you all the steps. So now we have the formula for the frequency for the standing wave patterns that are allowed in the string itself. So in other words, the string discriminates for these specific frequencies. Did that make sense? I know you guys want all frequencies to be the same, but they're not. No, because you guys are training the communist ways. Yeah, so the, the, this frequency is the one that's going to give you the standing wave pattern. So for example, if F1 equals to 20 hertz, that's your first standing wave pattern. So if the first frequency that gives you a standing wave pattern is 20 hertz, will 30 hertz give you a standing wave pattern? No, because remember last time we said that all of the allowed frequencies are going to be a multiple of the very first one. So if the very first one is 20, what can you multiply 20 by to give you 30? There is something. You can multiply by 30 over 20. But M is always a whole number. So now you're starting to see it. So yeah, of course you could have 30 over 20 as a number, but what kind of numbers does M have to be? They're whole numbers. So this means 3 over 2 will not be allowed. But what about the frequency of 40 hertz? Will 40 hertz give you a standing wave pattern? 20 times what gives you 40? Two, right so that's a whole number so that means that 40 Hertz actually belongs to the second standing wave pattern what about 60 Hertz is that a standing wave pattern what about 70 okay so see now you're starting to pick up on the pattern so it's like once you identify the first harmonic all the rest of the harmonics are a full whole number multiple of it so if your first harmonic is 20 hertz the second one has to be two times this the third one has to be three times this one the fourth has to be four times this one so that's why 30 hertz will not form a standing wave pattern wow that was a lot Take a small little mental break, stretch out. Pardon me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now uh, maybe you want to s talk about a joke. Maybe tell us a joke. That's not so funny, you're funny. No, you could play 30 hertz, but those 30 hertz will not form a standing wave pattern. So go to slide five. So the first one is 20 hertz, but then let's say you play 30 hertz. So you still get something, you get like some patterns along the string, like, but it's not the standing wave pattern because the next standing wave pattern occurs at 40 hertz. All right, so it doesn't have the symmetry that we can visually see. 
because we can't just jump from 20 hertz to 40 hertz. You know, you have to be changing the frequency in between. Oh, uh, 20 hertz was just an easy example to work with because uh, I know my multiplication table for 20 hertz, so it was okay. Does it make sense, Yikwe? Yeah, when it looks like uh, a nice symmetrical sine wave. It doesn't have to be perfect symmetry. Actually, for strings, it will always be perfect symmetry. Yeah, yeah, it will be symmetrical for, for us for us for them. All right, so no, no one had other jokes to share before we move on to slide six. All right, so the reason why we're going over these is because we're talking about strings, and in particular, if the nodes, node displacement, occur at the ends, we call that fixed ends. And this is commonly seen in musical instruments like guitar, violin, cello, others. I, I, I don't know so much about the instruments. But... There are also other types of instruments. Now, we don't have any one from Iran here, right? No, we don't. No, the country, Iran. Okay, because in, in, in Iran, they play this instrument that they sit on, and it's like a box. And this box is fully closed, but it's hollow. So the next type of instruments that we're going to look at are hollow boxes. Or in other words, an instrument that's closed on all ends. But now we're looking at sound waves. Before, we are looking at waves along a string. Now we're going to have to look at sound waves. And remember, for sound waves, these are longitudinal. And it is really hard to measure the displacement of the particles, let alone the number of particles. So when you look at sound waves, you're looking at the pressure differences. This is what we're going to do. We're looking at the pressure differences in the instruments. You have instruments for that. Right, so remember we have sound waves, they're longitudinal, and we're looking at the pressure differences. So there's going to be areas of compression and the areas of rarefaction. So when you look at a closed instrument, what do you expect to see at the boundary, at the, what can I call this, at the wall? Yes, wall. Do we suspect to see high pressure or low pressure? How did you come up with that so quickly? No, no, don't look at the box. Just look at the particles inside of the box. No, imagination. Okay, so we need to come up with an analogy, right? Now, maybe this is not so politically correct. It might get canceled. Uh, That's my fear now. Yeah, let's go with that. So suppose there's a fire alarm and there's a door that's closed. Which area of the room is going to have the highest pressure? Well, no, people are going to go to the door. People are going to try to go to the exit. So at the walls, you expect to have the highest pressure. Yeah, but you didn't have any reasoning for it. 
No, it had nothing to do with the person sitting on it. it it's just because when the particles are at the wall, there's going to be more collisions with the wall. If there are more collisions with the wall, that means that the pressure is higher at the wall. So if you think of the particles as people, and there's a door, and there's a fire, a lot of them are going to try to get to the ends. So that's where the pressure will be the highest. Yeah, I was trying to make an analogy together. So if the pressure is the highest at the ends, what do we suspect to happen right at the middle? Wow. So now we can draw our first standing wave pattern. Where this graph is pressure as a function of x, or in other words, length. Right, so we have the highest pressure at the ends of the instrument, and at the middle we have the lowest pressure. So that's why if you look at the axis, that's the intercept, so the lowest pressure point, pressure is zero. Okay, uh, let's go to slide seven because uh, that one got a bit too messy already. So in this case, the length of our instrument, we can call it L. And we know what a full wave cycle looks like. So in this length L, how much of a wave cycle is there? Uh, write it down, write it down. I'm drawing the picture for the rest. Um, not quite. Uh, how, how much of the cosine function is there? Another way to look at it. Right, because if you want to look at the cosine function, how much of it is in the first one? Half of it. L is the length of the instrument. So in this instrument, uh, how much of a wave cycle is there? Half a wavelength. OK, for to make it easier on yourselves, look at the second pattern. In the second pattern, we have a full cosine function. So the full cosine function is another way to say it's a full wave cycle. So how much of a cosine function is in the first? Hello, I can't hear you. OK, what about Chow or Josephine? You, you're not helping out very much today. Chow is still sad that Oscar's not here. See, I told you, she, she, she's thinking about his driving ability because she's like, oh, I hope he pays attention so he can drive me to the movies. No, no, no. Uh, don't think that you failed. This is new. This is actually very tricky. It's really hard to get this part. Okay, let's try this a different way. We're going to break this down into quarters. So you see for this function here that we have, let me break it down. Standing waves and musical instruments. Yikwe needs help. Okay, Yikwe. So if we go back to our sine graph, if I cut it in half, how much of a wave cycle is in each one? In each side is a half. And if I break this down into another smaller piece, I break it down to quarter, break it down to quarter pieces. 
So in my first one, if I break it down right the middle, how much of a wave cycle is in this distance? Yeah, because look, the red part is the same as this piece here. So how much of a wave cycle is that? A quarter. And the next quarter will be the remaining piece. So what's one quarter plus one quarter? Kim Jane, this is your specialty. It's a half of a wavelength, right? A quarter plus a quarter. So we can do this for the next one. We could break it down to quarters. So how many quarter pieces do we have? Four out of four. So therefore this is a full wave cycle. And you repeat the process for the rest. So you have one, two, three, four. Um, that, that's one way of looking at it. That's why I said this particular lesson has different formulas depending on what you're going to be counting. So let's first count the quarters. So you have six out of four. What is that equal to? Mm -hmm. And then the next one, all right, so I know Yikwe got it, now let's see if Raj got it. You don't see it, Raj? What about Chow? Because Chow was distracted, but I think she came back. But you know what's the best part about physics? Very forgiving. So if you didn't get it this time, we have another example. So let's go to slide eight. Because what's good about instruments, there are so many different types of instruments. There's an instrument for everybody. So some instruments, instead of being closed at both ends, they can be open at both ends, like a pipe. Now, who likes to play pipes? I don't know, but still people out there. So here we have a pipe, or in other words, the instrument that's open at both ends. So is the pressure going to be high or low at an open end? Okay, so now if we assume that the length of our pipe is L and the first pattern in the length L, how much of a wavelength is there? Remember what a full cycle looks like? It's the sine wave. This is only 
هاف Set the censorship party one. Wait, did I do that correct? Um, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so now we're repeating the process. So in the next pattern, in the length L, how much of a wave cycle is there? No, this is pattern one, pattern two. In the length L, there's the full wave cycle. What about the third pattern? Yeah, that's why we put L, no, 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 L equals to lambda, that's why it's one. And in the third pattern, 3 over 2 lambda, good. And m equals to 4. Two L. Good. So this one you're able to visualize it easier, right, Yikwe? Okay, but we still have another type of instrument. So let's go to slide nine. Now we have the type of instrument that's closed at one end and open at the other end. And what do we say? At the closed end, the pressure is the highest. And at the open end, the pressure is the lowest. Uh, your glass. Your glass. Cup. Wine cup. Right, it's closed and open. Or your beer mug. Right, because you know some people make a living of making sounds from wine cups. A wine cup. Look at the drawing. That's because you guys don't drink. You guys are good people. Well, actually, if you drink, this make you bad. No, no. Uh, you guys are just underage at the moment. Yes, but I want to say drinking does not make you a bad person. So the, 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 before I said this, I'll take that back. Now I don't promote illegal activities, but... Okay, so the first pattern, let's assume that we have the length L. So how much of a wave cycle is in this length L? Yeah, it's a quarter. Good. Because remember, this is a full sine wave, but how much of it is in the first standing wave? It's from the top to the node. So how much of a wave cycle is this? A quarter of a wave cycle. Mm-hmm. 
three quarters of a wave cycle. Hey, we still have more to do. What's the next pattern? Good. We have one more. Yes, yeah, seven over four. Now, because humans, they evolved through pattern recognition, and it takes three to make a pattern, right? So what do you suspect the next will be looking like? What, what, what is the next, uh, what, uh, for the next standing wave pattern, what's going to be L equal to? Yeah. Wow, so that, that that that's good. That means that you're worthy of being evolved up to this state that you make your predecessors proud. So now let's make them even more proud by coming up with a general formula. So what number is always at the bottom? Four. And what kind of numbers are the ones above? One, three, five, seven, nine. That's odd that you found that. Wow, that's really good. <laughs> that was a joke, yes. <laughs> Now, the only thing that's going to change now, I'm going to use the letter N. Because remember before, M could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So M was allowed to be all of the whole numbers, positive. But now N, it goes from 1, 3, five, seven, nine. So this is interesting because if this is our first frequency, what's going to be our next frequency? Do we call that F2 or F3? Yeah, so this instrument skips harmonics. It goes from the first harmonic to the third harmonic to the fifth to the seventh to the ninth, eleventh, and so on. So when you have an open closed instrument, it skips harmonics. That's amazing. Uh, ciao, good luck trying to explain this to Oscar. I know he's going to call you up like it's good, it's good communication though, like to call every day, it's good communication. But uh, yeah, good luck. Uh, 